from Damien. I begin my story with an event from the time when I was 10 years old, attending the local grammar school in our small country town. I can still catch the fragrance of many things which stir me with feelings of melancholy and send delicious shivers of delight through me. Dark and sunlit streets, houses and towers, clock chimes and people's faces, rooms full of comfort and warm hospitality, rooms full of secret and profound ghostly fears. It is a world that savors of warm corners, rabbits, servant girls, household remedies and dried fruit. It was the meeting place of two worlds. Day and night came there from two opposite poles. There was the world of my parents' house, or rather it was even more circumscribed and embraced only my parents themselves. This world was familiar to me in almost every aspect. It meant mother and father, love and severity, model behavior and school. It was a world of quiet brilliance, clarity and cleanliness. In it, gentle and friendly conversation, washed hands, clean clothes and good manners were the order of the day. In this world, the morning hymn was sung, Christmas celebrated. Through it ran straight lines and paths that led into the future. Here were duty and guilt, bad conscience and confessions, forgiveness and good resolutions, love and reverence, wisdom and Bible readings. In this world you had to conduct yourself so that life should be pure, unsullied, beautiful and well-ordered. The other world, however, was all also began in the middle of our own house and was completely different. It smelled different, spoke a different language, made different claims and promises. This second world was people with servant girls and workmen, ghost stories and scandalous rumours, a gay tide of monstrous, intriguing, frightful, mysterious things. It included a slaughterhouse and a prison, drunken and scolding women, cows in labour, thundered horses, tales of housebreaking, murder and suicide. All these attractive and hideous, wild and cruel things were on every side in the next street, the neighbouring house. Everywhere you could smell this vigorous second world, everywhere that is except in our house where my mother and father lived. There it was all goodness. It was wonderful to be living in a house in a reign of peace, order, tranquility, duty and good conscience, forgiveness and love. But it was no less wonderful to know there was the other, the loud and shrill, sullen and violent world from which you could dart back to your mother in one leap. The odd thing about it was that these worlds should border on each other so closely. When, for example, our servant Lena sat by the door in the living room at evening prayers and joined in the hymn in her clear voice, her freshly washed hands folded on her smoothed down pinafore, she belonged wholly and utterly to mother and father, to us, a world of light and righteousness. But when in the kitchen or woodshed immediately afterwards, she told me the story of the little headless man or started bickering with her neighbours. In the little butcher's shop, she became a different person, belonged to another world, was veiled in mystery. And it was the same with everybody, most of all with myself. Doubtless, I was part of the world of light and righteousness as the child of my parents. But wherever I listened or directed my gaze, I found the other thing and I lived half in the other world. Although it was often strangely alien to me and I inevitably 
suffer from pain and a bad conscience. Indeed, at times, I preferred life in the forbidden world and my return to the world of light, necessary and worthy, though it might be, was often almost like a return to something less attractive, something both more drab and tedious. I was often conscious that my destiny in life was to become like my father and mother, pure, righteous and disciplined. But that was a long way ahead. First, one had to sit studying at school, do tests and examinations. And the way always led through and past the other dark world.